boom <laughs> we're back with another 10 at 10 this time for december 27th of 2022 guys i'm matt and i'm tim today we're bringing you the 10 at 10 at 10 that's going to be listed at 10 a.m eastern standard time on mrmaple.com for those of y'all who don't know us we're a mailware business in western north carolina we ship directly to your door and we list at least 10 new trees every single tuesday at 10 a.m eastern standard time today we're going to talk about 10 of the actual 20 trees getting listed today so if you want to get part of our email you can sign up on mrmaple.com you'll get an email that'll tell you the full listing of 20 so you can be prepared for 10 a.m because you better check out quickly somebody forgot to take the gift to christmas they got you a gift you didn't have them anything don't worry we've got gift cards that arrive right away via email if you're late on your gift say hey my favorite gardener we've got you a gift from mr maple and it's the gift of gardening so those gift cards show up right away to your email that way you can have something as soon as you need we're going to start off our 10 at 10. on very first we have acer palmatum lillian's jewel this is one of our favorite variegated japanese maples this is a red on red variegated Japanese maple. Yeah, you've heard us talk about this one a lot here at Mr. Maple. It's probably the most stable of the bright pink on red variants. Uh, it's not Little Annie's Jewel, it's not Extravaganza, it's Lillian's Jewel, we love that one. I've actually met Lillian, a lovely young lady, and it's a very unique tree. I think we actually purchased the very first one of these ever sold from Del Lauk's Nursery. Uh, check out our whole video on Del Lauk's and some of his introductions. We do a Saturday showcase where we talk exclusively about plants from Del Lauk's and, and, and uh, Dell's Japanese maples. Lillian's Jewel might be one of my favorite plants from them. It was named by Jonathan Savlitch for his daughter and showstopper. If you know Lillian's Jewel, you know how cool this one is. Check out these sizes on this plant right now. Our sizes are what we currently have right now in December of 2022. If you're checking out at a later time or an earlier time, there may be different sizes. Let's move on to something kind of boring from uh, Lillian's Jewel. Now we have Olson's Frosted Strawberry, not boring at all actually. And another one from kind of Dell's lineage, Olson actually Dell's cousin. Yeah, Olson's Frosted Strawberry. This is a really cool reticulated type that really gives you some of those pink purple types on a smaller reticulated Japanese maple. Yeah, it's a very, very pink color in the early spring. I love it for that hue it gets. And that's where it gets that strawberry name. It kind of has some really nice shades to it. Beautiful reticulated Japanese maple. Now you probably know what reticulation is, but that means that etching throughout every single leaf, kind of similar to the Ghost series. Now, this is a plant you wanna give some protection from the hot afternoon sun. This makes an excellent tree for containers, small spaces. I mean, this is one of the smaller of the reticulated types. Love the color that this puts off. I mean, this really just puts some amazing colors out there. Pair those with something like a summer gold or a hot blonde mm -hmm. or something like Jordan, and you're gonna really make some pop color with this pink purple that Olson's Frosted Strawberry gives in the landscape. All right, you screwed up, dude. Why wasn't this one the Christmas special? <laughs> We've got Acer Palmatum Noel. I mean, we could have put this one on last time for Christmas, but we're bringing it anyway. We've got Acer Palmatum Noel. Now, this is a variegated form that is really unique. It's basically a variegated Shinda Shoujo, has that bright flaking, and it's really unique. It brings the high, intense colors and it really gives you almost a Ritano Nishiki X Shinda Soja. Yeah, love this plant. It's a selection by one of our good friends, John O'Brien. I mean, love this plant house. It just has this red on pink. I mean, it's almost unreal, the type of right. variegation. We've got so many variegated plants on this. <laughs> Lillian's Jewel, Olson's Frosted, Noel. Uh, I mean, an amazing plant. Really unusual with some amazing spring interest. I think we've got some good photos of the original Noel right. on our website as well. Named for John O'Brien's dog. Yeah. And uh, I first saw this one with our good friend at uh, Bethlehem Nursery. And, uh, you know, it was just really cool to see that. And what a fun plant to be growing. I saw this there with Dennis Dodge, and I thought, this is the craziest plant I've ever seen. I think Dennis actually tried to act like it came from Europe <laughs> right. because it was so secretive at the time. Yeah, it was it's the so... top secret thing for him. Yeah. So next up, we've got Acer Palmatum. Ryugu. This is a plant with really small leaves and little white flecking variegation in the leaves. It's this cool little dwarf Japanese maple. Now this is Ryugu, not Ryuzu, which is very close to be said, but very different traits. This one makes a perfect pairing with any of those dwarf uh, compact forms. This one's gonna look awesome next to Hime Sojo or something like that with a contrasting foliage, but that small 
compact foliage as well. This one has a really small leaf. It's one of the smallest leaf variegated forms for sure. Yeah, love what this one is. I mean, it's so unique, so different. It's very rare. It's one of those trees that was brought into the United States in 2008 with Kurohime, Kurenajishi, the mm -hmm. red lion's head. And this is a plant that is just not that pot. It, it, it hasn't reached its potential in the, in the nursery trade yet because a lot of people don't know about it. Right. Really good sizes, this one right now, too. Um, really great plant overall. Makes a great uh, container plant. You can also put this one in the conifer garden for some really interesting contrast. It's the perfect small maple for a variegated fan. If you like variegated maples and you like dwarfs, this one pairs both really nicely. So next up, we've got a tie. This one is tied for one of Talon Buckholtz's first introductions. I didn't know that until we did the, uh, the podcast with Talon. Check out our podcast with legendary nurseryman Talon Buckholtz. Uh, we asked Talon what his first introduction was, and he says Acer Palmatum fairy hair, but it was in the same seed batch with Red Cloud. And those were his first introductions. And I was like, wow, so these are the very first Maybe plants. Maybe 1A, 1B there. Yeah, these are the first introductions from the Floral Wonder Collection. Really cool, really cool addition there. Uh, nice red upright linear lobulum. Uh, if you haven't already, guys, check out our video on what is a linear lobulum. We go through and we explain what the strap leap style foliage is. They're really unique maples. I think they give a really ethereal uh, feel in the landscape. They kind of bring what I like about Asian garden, and it kind of has a bamboo-like feel to it. For a lot of people, it's everything you're going to want in an upright lace leaf. So you kind of get that open, airy approach to it. Good size one gallons on these two. Yeah, and this one will make a little bit larger tree. I mean, this is going to be a tree that will end up being 8 to 10 feet in 10 years. Um, so it's a little larger growing than fairy hair. Talon thought it was so unique that both these came out of the same seed batch. Right. He's like, both these came out of the same seed batch, which is very unusual because I also know that fairy hair was a seedling from Scolopendrifolium. Yeah, now and this one has a little bit more red coloration. It does, though. it does. Really cool, really not not that common in the nursery trade. I mean, that's a tree that you don't see every day in the nursery trade and pretty unusual to, to find available. Oh yeah. Next up we have Acer Palmatum Fascination. Now, shout out to Tom Nunnenkamp. We recently did a walkthrough of uh, Maple Walk and Tom and Lib Nunnenkamp have one of my favorite fascinations. It was actually out of leaf when I saw it, but if you know us, we're plant crazy. The form and structure of his fascination is one of my favorite fascinations I've ever seen. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our full video on Acer Palmatum Fascination. Me and Brian may have made that joke a time or two with fascination, but this tree really gives some really good fall color. Uh, this is an amazing plant that you don't see that often mm -hmm. uh, in the nursery trade, but when we actually went to check out some of Veritree's original works, right. we found letters from the guy who introduced this mm -hmm. and sent to Veritree's talking about how amazing this plant was. And it really is a really good plant, excellent, excellent fall color, and a, a pretty good grower as well. You can get some really nice shades in the fall of yellows and oranges on Fascination. It's a lovely plant, and uh, I, I think it's a great one to be growing in the landscape for sure. Yeah, I, I love that this plant, I mean, it's a great pairing with something like an orange flame. I oh, mean, yeah. it's going to give you very similar dynamics on the leaf structure, but mm -hmm. then really different fall colors that contrast really well with each other. Oh, great point, yeah. So next we've got Acer Palmatum Black Hole. This is one of those new ghosts by Talon Buckholtz. We've got a heavily influenced variegated and talon buckholtz 10 at 10 here uh, i love black hole pair it with nebula like part of that celestial series there you could call it a uh, black hole is a reticulated veining uh upright reticulated tree that's going to look similar to purple ghost but with even darker foliage it's one of the blackest of that forms and you still get some really nice reticulated variegation there where you see the etching of the veins throughout the leaf i mean this plant great to pair with something that's starkly different with it you know, I always say pair it with something like a summer gold. Right. But that's going to really give some dynamic contrast between the two plants on its colors. You know, another nice one to pair with this one, something like Blonde Beauty. Another one of those new ghosts, bright yellow, this be a dark, dark red. Uh, Black Hole's really nice. I think we actually have one of the very first grafts of this here at our nursery. Maybe we'll have to do a cultivar highlight with that here. It might even be the original one. Uh, really great plant to be growing, though. Yeah, I, I love what that one does out in the landscape. Just gives you some of that dark, dark colors, some really nice fall colors of bright reds to darker colors as well. And really awesome plant. But we go from one plant that's really a plant that gives you some good fall color to another. Oh, I love Maiku Jaku. Acer japonica Maiku Jaku. 
probably our most popular japonicum here at Mr. Maple, often referred to as the dancing peacock. You may know this plant as Aconitifolium maiku jaku, uh, dancing peacock, and Aconitifolium are all the same thing. We do go with what we find to be the original name, the maiku jaku from Japan. Yeah, whenever uh, Gus and Coelho was here, he actually was at the Maple Society meeting from France. He's the, the chairman of the International Maple Society. And he brought up the point about senescence, the plants starting their fall color. Some Japanese maples start their fall color based on cold temperatures coming in. Some on the, short, the shortness of the day, so the day length getting shorter. The reason that's really unique is because Meiku Jaku is one of those ones that depends on the length of the day. And so as that day gets shorter, the fall color starts to come in with this plant. And that means that this plant gives a really consistent fall color with some really nice yellows, oranges, and reds. And the leaf looks like a peacock leaf. Yeah. It looks like a peacock displaying its, its feathers. And when you start getting the peacock feathers, essentially, getting filled with fall colors, it looks like a peacock displaying, just going up there and showing all those amazing colors. Love what this plant does in the landscape. So next up here on the table, we've got Acer Palmatum Diva. I tried to hand it to you this time, and you were over just block it and go for the other. I'm so used to you blocking the way, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> so Acer Palmatum Diva is a diva in the springtime. I mean, this thing really puts on some really nice red border nail likes, almost like a sumagaki or sumabeni. Yeah, it's a beautiful divided leaf that has some really nice habits. It's one of the later introductions by our friend Talon Buckle. So this is another one from the Flora Wonder Collection. And uh, it, it really is a diva in the spring. I love the color displays this one brings. Now, I remember going to Buckholtz Nursery in the fall, and it really gives some really nice shades of peachy to orange in the fall as well. So it can really get some good fall colors on this plant as well. But like Diva says, this plant can really steal the show in the spring or the fall. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we've got Acer Palmatum Yamanishki. Yeah, Yamanishki is an amazing plant. This plant is huge too. I mean, this is a giant, giant one gallon. We've got some monsters this time, guys. I don't even know if these are in camera. Uh, these are ready for threes, so don't wait on these. You often hear me say these sizes are indicative of right now. I will rarely offer bigger ones than these right now because if I do, they'll have to go into three gallons. This is probably the max size we can fit in our one gallon box for Yamanishki. Awesome reticulated displays in that early spring. Now this one's gonna be more reticulated like Higasayama style. It actually has some parts that get all the way white. That's where it gets that snow peak like interest. I mean, you get some spots on it that look like a covered mountain. Now, this plant is an amazing plant. Like Matt said, the name Yamanishki is supposed to, be, supposed to translate as snow peak. And that's because this one just has those super white reticulated variegations. Now I remember seeing this plant for the very first time up at NJ Acer's garden, Ed Shin, Shout out to Ed. He just got official arboretum status in his garden. Amazing. Ed and Debbie are amazing people. They used to host this huge spring gathering every single spring. And I remember seeing this plant right when it was about to get introduced. I mean, Snow Peak with those reticulated variegations. That's what Yamanishki is supposed to translate as. Right. It's a super white Higasayama. I think Fred Hooks might have been the first one to introduce this one to the United States from Japan and a uh, really cool plant. Uh, these are awesome sizes again, guys. Make sure to buy one before I poke a hole in our greenhouse. <laughs> They're giants. Guys, these are our sizes today. Now this is just 10 of the plants on the 10 at 10. If you want the full listing, sign up for our weekly emails. We list that 10 at 10, but we've actually been listing 20 for quite a while. So sign up for that email to get notified about the other plants. Uh, I think you're gonna wanna be a part of that. We, we list those plants at 10. Eastern, uh, Eastern Daylight Savings Time, and it is one of our most popular things we do. Uh, oftentimes, some of our more popular items will sell out right away, so definitely get involved in that 10 at 10. Now, we say this every single week, but make sure that you check out really quickly. Um, complete that checkout process, because our systems don't hold it for you, hold the tree for you, until you complete the checkout process and you have an order number. Once you've completed your checkout process and you have an order number, then those trees are saved with your name on them. So make sure you check out very quickly because many of these trees will sell out fast on today's 10 at 10. Hey, shout out to our mad maple lovers in the live chat. You guys are awesome. You guys make me smile every single day in that live chat. We've got an awesome community that gets in there. I mean, oftentimes they're asking each other about plants. There's a whole uh, community building there and it's just a great conversation going on. So shout out to our live chat people. You guys really make me smile and you make doing these videos worthwhile. 
Thank y'all so much for watching today. We really appreciate y'all. Take care. Happy New Year. And have a blessed day.